Shalom. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Welcome back. Ready to get back into the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Begin, beginning at verse 1. All the way down to verse 31. Genesis chapter 1. You got the scriptures? You ready? All right. Let's begin. Verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Amen. All right. It says, in the beginning, God. All right. Let's define God. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what the scripture says. Now, I know this is it's not saying it now, but that's who he is. You got to understand the first five books of the scriptures are the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. was written by Moses. Moses is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Levi. All right? So the Lord God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, gave to Moses the knowledge and understanding. So Moses wrote the first five books of the scriptures. So that's why God is still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses wrote these books. So it says, in the beginning, God. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of Israel. It says he created the heaven and the earth. So, either you believe or you don't. It says in the beginning. That's who in God is in the beginning. He said he's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. <laughs> no one before him or after him. Verse 2, he says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. All right? So it says, God created the heaven and the earth. And then verse 2, he says, the earth was without form and void. That means uh, it didn't have a shape to it. And it was empty. And then it says, darkness was upon the face of the deep. It was a water. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then it says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So God breathed on the face of the waters. Verse 3 says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. <laughs> so the first thing that God said in the scriptures is, let there be light. That light is Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. <laughs> he was in the beginning with God. He is the word of God. So when, when God said, let there be light, he spoke Jesus into existence. Jesus is that light. Let there be light. That's Jesus. And there was light. Jesus is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> now, I know we're in the Old Testament. But what I'm trying to do so to help you understand is you got to understand the scriptures because the Old Testament and the New Testament go hand in hand. Yeah, the Old Testament is first and then the New Testament, but they go hand in hand. They, they're related. You got to understand both. You can't just read the New Testament. Then you won't you take it out of context if you don't understand the Old Testament. You can't just read the Old Testament because you'll take it out of context because you don't know about the New Testament. So you got to understand both. They go hand in hand. in hand. They go together. God doesn't change. The same way he is in the Old Testament is the same way he is in the New Testament. People get to the New Testament and think, oh, it's different now. No, it's not. He's still the same. Scripture says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, he don't change. But that's because of these 501c3 corporations. Most people have been deceived because these corporations are the blind leading the blind. Jesus said if the blind lead the blind, they're both going to fall into the ditch. 
These 501c3 corporations are antichrist church system. What I mean by that? Anything that goes against the word of God is antichrist. And the main one is, is Catholicism, Christianity. It's all the same, but all the religions basically are antichrist. All of them. Every last one of the religions in the world. They're antichrist. Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, the Son of God, didn't come to start any religion. He only came to save his people from their sin. Judaism is a religion. But Judah is one of the tribes of Israel. And, and the fake Jews are the ones that don't believe, especially back in the uh, days of the Lord Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, the Pharisees, they turn uh, Judaism into a religion. They turn the name of Judah into Judaism into a religion with man-made doctrines and traditions. And so even today, the people over in the land called the nation of Israel who go by Jewish. <laughs> the Jewish means like. They know they're not Jews, so they call themselves Jewish. We like Jews. <laughs> we may not be Jews, but we like Jews, so we Jewish. <laughs> They're not Jews. They're not scriptural Jews. They're not of the tribe of Judah. They're not of the seed of Abraham. They're Ashkenaz, Khazarians, and Japheth Gentiles who have taken over the land by fraud and deceit. And since 1948, the world, everyone believes that's God's chosen people in that land. All of God's chosen people are scattered, especially the tribe of Judah. Judah is scattered to the four winds. So you got to keep all this in context to understand the scriptures. If you don't, you're going to take them out of context. So God, this is not the sunlight. This is Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. And there was light. He spoke Jesus. Jesus is the word. That's why the scripture says in John, 1 John, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God and the word was with God. <laughs> Jesus said him and his father are one. They are. And so this is what you got to understand when you're reading and studying the scripture. So when he said, let there be light, he spoke Jesus. Jesus is that light. And there was light. Verse 4, and God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Because it said darkness was upon the face of the deep. And so he said, no, nah, we, we can't have this darkness. So he spoke Jesus into existence. But it's a lot of stuff happened when, when the Lord was creating the heaven and the earth. And you, you just got to go back and reread and restudy the scriptures because Satan had already been kicked out of heaven. <laughs> okay. And where we at? Verse verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. So there's a difference between light and darkness. That's what the scripture wants you to understand. God is light. So the darkness doesn't have anything to do with God. He said he divided the light from the darkness. Verse 4, I mean verse 5, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning was the first day. So when the Lord spoke light into existence, he separated the light from the day. And he called the light, he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. So that was the first day of heaven and earth creation. So what you got to understand about heaven and earth, heaven is God's throne. Earth is an extension of heaven okay so it's no planet it's not a globe it's not spinning it's the scripture said earth is god's footstool people want to say oh there's other people in other in other worlds and all this crazy stuff about science scripture says so-called science if science contradicts scripture then scripture outrules science. If science doesn't agree with the scripture, scripture always trumps science. But some people, science is their God. Science is their religion. Those are the people going around saying that there ain't no God and 
earth is a planet and a, a globe. They're antichrist. They go against the word of God. All right. So he separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day and he called the, the, the darkness night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. He didn't call them Sunday. He didn't call it Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. He didn't call them that. He said it's the first day. Verse 6. And God said, let there be a firm firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. All right. So he's talking about firmament. What's that? That's the space between earth and heaven. <laughs> And he said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let, the, let it divide the waters from the waters. So the firmament is what divide the waters on earth from the waters in heaven. So when you look into the sky and you, in the sunlight, you see all this blue. That's water. <laughs> People don't understand. There is no outer space. All that stuff that so-called science is telling you, they're lying. There ain't no outer space. They can't penetrate this sky, this firmament. They've been trying. They ain't been to the moon. That's a lie also. <laughs> he said, let, the, let it divide the waters from the waters. The only thing, the only way that, that firmament is being penetrated is by God. When he opened up those floodgates and flooded the earth. That's when they was open up. But man ain't getting past that. There ain't no outer space. You've been lied to. <laughs> you just got to go back and reread and restudy the scriptures. And your 501c3 corporations, they're not going to tell you this because they're part of the Antichrist church system. So if this sounds strange to you, then that means you've been deceived. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 7, And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. <laughs> See, that's, that's what I just said. The waters on earth, and then there's the waters in heaven. And what's between it, what we call space or air, that's the firmament. So when you look up at the sky, at the firmament, that's water. It, it is not. It can't come down because God got a, a ceiling that it, it won't come down. But you can't get out. You can't get in. So all these rockets and stuff they call themselves shooting and, and deep space and whatever they ever, whatever else science want to call it, NASA, whatever they want to call it, they not penetrating that 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 firmament. They can't get past it. <laughs> So they've lied to you all this time. You're thinking the earth is a globe and it's spinning. It's not. Verse 6 again, he said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the water. Verse 7, And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And so that's what well, it is. That's how it is. It was so. <laughs> The waters uh, uh, underneath the firmament is on earth. The waters above, that's uh, in the heaven. That's when you see in the blue sky. That's water that you're seeing. But it's, it's a dome that's not allowing the water to, to overflow the earth. He separated the water. He said, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. See, that's how he flooded the earth the first time. He opened up the firmament and it flooded the earth. The earth is flat. It ain't round. It ain't rotating. <laughs> they lied to you. Verse 8, And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. So he created the firmament. He speaks expanse, <laughs> a distance. So above the firmament is heaven. It is it, water. But above that, God's throne. 
God can look through and see everything that's going on. He knows where his people are who and who they are. You just got to believe the word of God. He said, and he called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 9. So that was the second day. The first day was light. The second day was heaven. Verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. And so all the waters under the heaven, they were gathered on the earth. And then he said, let the, let the dry land appear. And so the dry land was called earth. It's called earth. It's not called a globe. So every time you turn on the TV or watch a movie or a commercial anywhere, <laughs> everybody want to say globe, the globe, the globe, the globe. They're lying to you. It's not a globe. But everybody's just believing the lie, the global lie. It's not a globe. It's, it's the earth. But see, that's the devil. <laughs> that's the Antichrist. Everything that God said, he goes against it. So every time they say globe, they're Antichrist. They're going against what the scripture says. And that's, that's how it is. And so they're deceiving you when they say globe. So in every school, everywhere in the world, in the earth, they put a globe and they teach you a lie. <laughs> And so from beginning of your life, you think, okay, the earth is a globe because that's what they teach you in school. That's a lie. That's science. <laughs> Just believe the scripture. The earth is not a globe. What is it? Well, is it flat? It's not flat like a pancake, but it, 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 it's not a spinning globe. It's, it's, it's a circle, you know, like a... a uh, a coaster is flat, but it's a circle. And so that's probably the way it is. It's a circle, but it's not a globe. Because <laughs> the scripture said the circle of the earth. And, and people take that out of context and say, it said the circle of the earth. That doesn't mean it's a globe. <laughs> but that's what people do. They, they take the scriptures out of context to try to make it fit their cup of tea. The scriptures are only written to God's chosen people. It's the book of the law, the five books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's written to Israel. It's not written to everybody else in the whole wide world. Everybody else in the whole wide world that's not Israel have confiscated the scriptures and taken the scriptures out of context to try to make the scriptures apply to them. But it does not. It only applies to God's people. His chosen people. Your 501c3 corporation. Again they've lied to you. They don't like to say God has a chosen people. But he does. That's what the scripture said. <laughs> and it's Israel. All 12 tribes. Alright where we at? Verse uh, 10. I think. And God called the dry land earth and gathered together the waters. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. So the dry land is called earth. It's not called a globe. It's not spinning. <laughs> and that's what people have lied to you, want you to think. And the gathering together of the water he called, called, called he seas. And God saw that it was good. Verse 11 and God said, remember, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of Israel. He's not the God of everybody. God created, we're going to get into it, vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. <laughs> but people don't understand that. And verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his can, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So now the Lord is creating all the vegetation. He said, let the earth bring forth grass. 
So all the green vegetation that you're seeing, God created that. He said the, 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 the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its can. So the earth was made to create. Every, God is a creative force, a created being. He creates. In the earth, is a cre it, it creates after God. And so he said, let the earth bring forth grass. The earth, he, he created the earth to bring forth the grass. The, the herb yielding seed and the fruit, fruit tree yielding fr uh, fruit after its kind. So all these seeds are in the earth, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. <clears throat> and so all the seeds have a re reproduction cycle inside of them. So they, they're in the earth, they reproduce, and their seed is in them. And it was so. So science tried to understand God or disprove God, but they can't. Because God is, we are. Without God, there is no us. <laughs> but science, anytime science goes against the scripture, science is antichrist. And that's what the devil is. The devil is antichrist. Verse uh, 12. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after its came, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself, after his can, and God saw that it was good. So he created the earth. He created the seeds in the earth. The seeds brought, the earth brought forth the grass, the herb yielding seed after his can, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed within itself after his can. And God said, yep, that's good. <laughs> Everything God created, he said, yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> so Jesus is right there with him. With him, when he speaks the word, Jesus is doing the creating. Jesus is right there with him. Jesus is the word that he's speaking. Verse 13. And the evening and the morning were the third day. It wasn't Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. It was the third day. <laughs> That's what the Lord called him. So you got to understand the reasoning behind all these names of days. Because... The world has changed stuff to fit them. And now people don't even know when the Sabbath. Today is the Sabbath. Today is the seventh day. That's what seven means, Sabbath. Today is the seventh day. And so the, your Antichrist church system, people don't understand. They think Sunday is the seventh day or Sunday is the Sabbath. <laughs> but that was prophesied in the scripture that People will come up and they will try to change days and seasons. And so a lot of people don't understand when the Sabbath is. They think Sunday is the day of rest. They think Sunday is the Sabbath. But that's how the devil is. Everything that God does, the devil tries to change. That's why he's antichrist. He always goes against what God's word says. So that's how you know it's antichrist. And that's... That's, that's what the devil does. That's what all these religions does. They go against the word of God. <laughs> but people think they're serving God. But you're serving the Antichrist. Especially all the 12 tribes of Israel. We're the ones that are being deceived. The rest of the world is not being deceived. Because they're not God's people. So they're doing whatever they want to do. But God's chosen people, Hebrew Israelite. We're the ones being deceived, like Adam and Eve. We're going to get into it. It's going to be good. Praise the name of the Lord. So, verse 13, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Verse 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Look at God. God is awesome. <laughs> he said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven. When you look up and you see the stars at night, he said, to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. 
You know, when you look up in the night and see the stars and the moon, the Lord put those there. The, 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 the sun, the moon, the stars, he put them there for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years to divide the day from the night, for, to divide the darkness from the night. So that's what the scripture says, and that's what it is. Verse 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And so, the, 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 the lights in the heaven, in the firmament, are giving light upon the earth. The earth is the center. What are they going to call it? The, the, the universe. The earth is the center of the universe, not the sun. Everything is a revolving above the earth. They're above the earth. And let there be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. They're shining down upon the earth. They're above. The earth is beneath. The, the sun is above. It's not beneath. The earth is not rotating around the sun. They lied to you. NASA lied to you. Science lied to you. <laughs> Quit believing the lie. Believe the word of God. To give light upon the earth. And it was so. That's what the scripture said. Though you can believe it or not. <laughs> Anything that goes against the scripture is antichrist. Verse 16. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. And the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And so God. He created the sun. He created the moon. And he created the stars also. The greater light is the sun, and it rules the day. The lesser light is the moon, and it rules the night. <laughs> God's smart. He's intelligent. All intelligence comes from the Father of heaven, <laughs> the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> You've just been confused by all this so-called science and been lied to. All you got to do is read the scriptures, <laughs> and then look up, and you can see, yeah, that's what it says. That's what it is. Don't believe what these folks telling you about the globe is spinning. You're not spinning around millions, and the earth ain't been here millions and millions of years. They're lying to you. Where we at? Verse 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. So the sun and the moon is in the heaven. God set them there to give light upon the earth. That's why they're there. The earth is the center of the universe. You got all these knuckleheads out here talking about the earth is just a little speck. We we ain't no we not significant. The earth is the center of the universe. Everything, the, all the stars in heaven, uh, in the heaven, the sun, they revolve above the earth to give light on the earth. There ain't no other planets, and the earth is not a planet, and all these other stuff they call them planets and stuff. They're just lying to you. Oh, there's a, there's a different planet and blah, blah, blah. They're lying to you. <laughs> well, they, they got the telescopes, and they're lying to you. <laughs> Keep believing the lie if you want to, just like Adam and Eve did. <laughs> all right, verse uh, 18. And to rule over... Well, verse 17 again. And God sent, set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Verse 18. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide, to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So he created the heavens, the earth, the, 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 the seas, the grass, the fruit trees, the stars in the heaven, the sun, the moon. <laughs> Everything, the, the, the stars, uh, and he divided the day from the night to rule over the, the, the day, to, and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. So God saw that, he said, yep, that's good. Verse 19, and the evening and the morning was the fourth day. So God just took his time. He didn't do everything at one time. He like, I got all the time in the world, no rush. I do this today, 
and then next I do this the next day. So that's what he did. Verse 20, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So the waters have a creative power. The Lord said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that hath light. <laughs> so that's what signs, they, they, they be looking for on these so-called planets they they looking for. If they find water, they know they find life. But they, they ain't found no planets and they ain't found no life. <laughs> they spending all this money, at least they say they do. <laughs> if we found water on such and such, you're lying. And the moving creature that have life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament. So all the all the creatures and all the fowls that that's flying upon the earth came out of the water, that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament. <laughs> that's where they came from. The Lord spoke it into existence. Verse twenty one. And God created whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their can, and every winged fowl after its can, and God saw that it was good. So everything in the earth, God created it. So the earth is the Lord and everything in it. He created everything, all the living creatures, the whales, everything in the ocean, everything above the, that's flying around, all the fowls, the winged fowls after its can, God created it. He said, oh, yep, yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> Verse 22, and God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And so God spoke to the creatures <laughs> and they listened to what he said. They didn't object. They didn't say, no, we ain't going to do that. They obeyed. He said, be fruitful. And multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And they obeyed the word of God. They did what God said to do. They, they multiplied in the seas and the waters and the fowl multiplied in the earth. Verse 23, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. The Lord said, wow, that's good. I like that. <laughs> so he just took his time and created everything and the, the, the scriptures is pointing these out for a reason and for a purpose and, and, and calling them the fifth day. The, the scripture says in the New Testament, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. And so you can take it as that also. I mean, what the Lord calls a day, it could be a thousand years because he, he, owe, he owns time. Time is nothing to him. But to us, it may be a thousand years but to him it's just a day even now this very present time it's nothing to the lord the lord has seen everything in the earth from beginning to end <clears throat> we already live a tale that's already been told he knows everyone that's being born that was born he knows the day of your birth the day of your day. he knows all of that <laughs> nothing is hid from the lord and so this day, what we call a day, it's nothing. It's the same day he created everything to him. Ain't nothing changed. He, it's for us. It's, it's for seasons and times and years for us. But it's not for him. Time doesn't exist for him. That's what you have to understand about God. We think God is, he ain't running out of time. He got all the time in the world to do whatever he want to do. Verse 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his can and cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after his can. And it was so. So now the Lord is speaking to the earth again. He said, earth, bring forth living creatures after his can, cattle and creeping things and the beasts of the earth after his can. The earth said, Okay. <laughs> And it was so. The earth didn't oppose, object. <laughs> the earth agreed with the Lord and did exactly what the Lord told it to do. The earth obeyed the voice of God. 
scripture talks about the trees in the heaven. They, they give thanks. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. <laughs> Verse 25, and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and God saw that it was good. So all of nature understand who God is. <laughs> they know objection. <laughs> they know who created it, who created them. But man, we the one has the issues. <laughs> Think we smarter than God. <laughs> Just believe the scriptures. Don't believe all this science because they're deceiving you. Especially Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. Believe the scriptures. That's what it is. Man call it a Bible, but it's the scriptures. It's the word of God. These are the first books of the law. Genesis is the first book. Moses wrote it. Moses is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Levi. The Lord gave Moses the revelation, knowledge, and understanding to write this. And so that's why God is still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. Nothing has changed. Verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the seas and over the fowl of the air and over cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So this is what God decreed for man. He said, let us. He's talking to Jesus. <laughs> he said, let, let, let's, let's agree. Let's, let us make man in our image. <laughs> in the image of God. In our image. After our likeness. He's going to look just like us. So God has a likeness. And his people have that same likeness. Hint. <laughs> They're black. So-called black. God didn't call us black. We're made in his image after his likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And see, the reason I'm bringing this up is because the people that's not God's people... They're the ones that created the lie. They're the devil's people. Jesus said, the, the children of the wicked one. The devil has people. So they're the ones that are perpetrating the lie. Pe 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 <laughs> perpetuating the lie. Perpetuating the, the, the lie of the devil. Saying God is white. Jesus is white. His people is white. They're the ones that started white supremacy. Now the truth is coming out. That they lied. God ain't white. Jesus wasn't white. <laughs> and God's people are not white. <laughs> but they perpetuated the lie. And everybody in the world believes God was white. Jesus was white. That's why they had this picture of Jesus as a white man. And we everybody grew up believing Jesus was white. <laughs> because they know that they're not God's chosen people. Everything that goes against scripture is anti-Christ. All right? The Lord is setting the record straight. And he's going to continue to set it straight. We just got to believe the scripture. It's always been straight. It's always been right. All you got to do is believe what it says. But a lot has happened, especially to us, God's chosen people. We were knuckleheads, and a lot of us are still knuckleheads. We don't believe the scripture. And the Lord said, all right. <laughs> he's he just like a parent. He warns us. He's like, all right, don't do this. Don't do that. If you do, this is going to happen to you. He let us know exactly what's going to happen. We don't listen. <laughs> like Y'all hard-headed. Y'all got to learn the hard way. Same stuff my mom used to tell us. <laughs> Y'all don't know how to keep a whooping off of you. She'll tell us something, and we go and do the opposite. And so she had to punish us. So that's how God is. He's just like our parents. He tell us to do something, we don't do it. So he punishes us. <laughs> The scriptures that bring up a child in the way that he should go. When he get older, he won't depart. It says, spare the rod, you spoil the child. You got to beat that behind sometime. <laughs> but God said, Let, we're going to create man in our image after our likeness. So when he said, man, who is he talking about? <laughs> I have to ask the question because you have to have an understanding. And all that getting, get an understanding. 
Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. God has a chosen people in the earth. And so the people that he's talking about, the man that he's talking about is his people. It hasn't changed from the beginning to the end. That's what you got to understand. Let us make man in our image. He's talking about himself. That's who he's talking about. Jesus. Adam. Adam is the first. And Jesus is the second Adam. Adam was made of the earth. Jesus was made of the spirit. But they're the same. They're God's people. We're God's people. He's not talking about everybody else in the whole wide world. The scripture are only written to God's chosen people. It's not written to everybody else in the whole wide world. Everybody else in the whole wide world is taking the scriptures out of context to try to make the scriptures apply to them, but it does not. It only applies to his chosen people who are the 12 tribes of Israel. <clears throat> if you don't believe me, then I can't help you. That's what the scripture says. And you think I'm lying? Okay, keep believing that. <laughs> You're going to have to deal with that on the day of judgment. That's what the script is written to Israel, all of it, from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation. It's not written for everybody else. And he's talking to his chosen people. He, this is what he's creating, his people. Let us make man in our image. He, this is his people. After our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the earth, and over the cattle, and over the, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's the authority that he gave unto us at the beginning, unto Adam and Eve. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Talking about Adam and Eve. And people are like, well, where are all the other folks come from? <laughs> God has a chosen people. All right? He made people. He made two kinds of people. People for honor and people for dishonor. Okay, the chosen people are the people of honor. <laughs> and the people that are uh, not honorable for dishonor, he made them, but they're not his people. <laughs> That's what you got to understand. Everybody is not God's people. And that, that's what people get caught up. And they think, God loves everybody. No, he does not. He only loves his people. He got people that, that are honor and people of dishonor. Pharaoh was a people of dishonor. That's why he killed all the Egyptians. And when he gave us the land, he let go. Y'all got to take out all these people. You got to kill them. I'm giving this land to y'all. <laughs> you got to understand what the scriptures are about. It's about God and his people. Uh, everybody else is vessels of dishonor. All right, where we at? Verse 27 again. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Male and female. Not male and male. He didn't make Adam and Steve. He didn't make Eve and Yvette. <laughs> he made Adam and Eve. Male and female created he them. So all these folks going about, talking about same-sex marriage. Y'all anti-Christ. Everybody that believes in that and doing that and approves of it, you're anti-Christ. <laughs> Verse 28, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So this is the authority that God gave to his people. He didn't give it to everybody. He gave it to his people. He started out with Adam and Eve. All the rest of the people in the earth is not his people. He created them, but they're not his people. They're people of dishonor. <laughs> and so Adam and Eve were the only people of honor. That's what you have to understand. God, he can create who he wants to. That's what he does. 
What you gonna say? Why you create me like this? <laughs> That's what he did. Verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me. So the Lord provided for his people. He said, y'all ain't going to have to be hungry. <laughs> Whatever you want to eat is right there for you. Every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, the face of all the earth <laughs> is not a spinning globe. <laughs> the Lord told us what the earth is and what it looks like from the beginning. But we caught up in all this science, believing the, the devil instead of believing the word of God. Just like Adam and Eve did, we still that's that's why he had to come to 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 save us, redeem us, because we were just knuckleheads. Well, <laughs> just believe the scriptures, believe the word of God. It's the face of the earth; it's not a globe. He said, "I've given you all this food to eat, and every tree in the, which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me. This is the, your food. This is what you're supposed to eat." If you get hungry, and you will get hungry. <laughs> Verse 30, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me. And it was so. So everything that he created, All the beasts of the earth, all the fowls in the air, everything that creepeth upon the earth. He said, I've given the green herb for meat. That's your food. That's what you eat. The animals, the, 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 the beasts of the earth, they all agree. Okay, Lord. <laughs> they didn't protest, <laughs> object, or anything. They just obeyed. But man, <laughs> wow, us, <laughs> we had a lot to learn. But God ain't finished with us. He started with us. He's going to continue with us. Verse uh, 31. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So it took six days. <laughs> At least to us it took six days. Or to the Lord it took six days. It may have been 6,000 years. But anyhow, that's what the Lord said. And so he created it. That's how it is. That's who we are. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.